Hello everyone, this is Maxime Schwinner. Today we're going to look at the basic techniques of the Baton Joinville, or as some people would call it, Great Stick, or uh, French Baton, or Le Baton. Uh, so the uh, Baton Joinville was created at the Joinville School. So the full name of the school is the, the uh, École Normale de Gymnastique et d'Escrime de Joinville-le-Pont. We'll just call it uh, Joinville today, um, for obvious reasons. But uh, this school was created during the Second Empire, so under Napoleon III, and uh, was created in 1851, to be more exact, and was in activity until the beginning of World War II. And it was uh, founded to teach the, uh, the skills, uh, the physical skills, uh, to trainers and to uh, officers in the French army. So those skills were, of course, gymnastics, but as well of course, fencing, uh, you'd have uh, uh, bayonet fencing, saber and foil, you'd also find savat, uh, boxing, wrestling, swimming, and uh, of course, lacan and baton. So this school was extremely influential, uh, it, it influenced not only uh, uh, armies in Europe, but as well as in the United States and in some of the French colonies, including what is now Vietnam, and as far as Japan. Uh, so Japan uh, adopted early on the same material as uh, the Joinville Academy. This is a translation you see here from one of uh, the uh, Joinville manuals in, in Japan, uh, in Japanese. Uh, so we're going to look at some of the basics of this style and starting with the salute and the guard. So you see that it's a fairly simple uh, style. Now we're going to start by the in the carry positions. This is the rest position. We go to the attention. We rise up for the salute. And we take the guard. So when we take the guard, as you'll see, so we're doing the salute here from the side. So this is roughly a guard of cart. Feet are in line as if I was fencing uh, in a L shape position and the weight is dip distributed evenly. So not backward, but really uh, about 50-50 on both legs. Now the stick is held so that a certain portion covers my forearm and we'll uh, we'll see why later on. Um, now I'm also holding the stick fairly high around mid uh, body uh, instead of holding it by the hips where the uh, the lower portions of the talon could be a hindrance. As you see if I grab it by the end there's no problem moving it around. If I grab it by the end I have to start a little bit higher which gives me a little bit more um, possibility to move it. Also all the blocks as you'll see all the parries are done point down or point flat so knowing this uh, it's easier for me to start in a um, higher position higher guard than a lower one. So let's go to the preparatory motions. Uh, so these are done to train the body, train the arms, and some of the basic motions of a uh, great stick of uh, bottom. So we start with the baiser. So this can be done with a full arm or with the wrists. Uh, you see here all, all my body is involved in this movement. So I'm, I'm doing basically figure eight uh, motion going forward. So downward and up. The second one is the moulinet. So, although we call all these movements so usually moulinet, this is, according to the French army, the actual moulinet. So, a uh, flat uh, or horizontal motion going around the head. Then we go for the enlevé. So, this is the reverse of the brisé. So, going up and downward. Now let's look at some of the uh, basic parries in the system. So we're following some of the, the, the actual progression that is shown in the, uh, the Joinville manuals. So this is the parade de tête. Uh, so the parade de tête is the head parry. 
so we're protecting our head. Most manuals show it from one side. I'm showing the reverse here, which is a little bit harder to uh, pull off, uh, but this can also be done. Of course, make sure that your hands are not in the way, that they're extended outside so that if something happens, uh, they're out of the way. Uh, they don't become an easy target for your opponent trying to reach your head. I can also do all the parries with the hands apart. So this is very useful if I have to face a heavier weapon or if I want to get close to my opponent. Or also if I want to use thrusts, as we'll see in a minute. So I can do them, of course, as, as we'll see later with the uh, body parries on both sides. This is the parade de corps, so body parry. So again, I'm keeping the point down. Uh, this is to block a blow that would be coming for the face, coming for the flank. So what I'm trying to do is to make sure that the blow does not come sliding on my hands as I'm making it. So this is uh, a philosophy that you'll find also in Vigny Lacan and Bartetsu. Um, so Vigny also studied the Joinville material when he was in the army and so this is probably where the idea came from originally. See I'll do it on both sides. It's I try to keep the stick fairly straight and uh, also supported on my arms. Give it a little bit more structure. So now we move to the strikes and the first one is the coup de bout de pointe. So the coup de bout de pointe is basically a thrust forward. Now as those sticks are fairly light compared to some of the uh, um, the huge quarter staffs that you see in uh, some of the Renaissance treaties, I do need a, a little bit more power to make those thrusts uh, effective. So this is why I'm taking this charge position, as you'll see here. So this, uh, so those that uh, study early bayonet drills, you'll recognize the charge bayonet motion. So bring the feet together and I thrust by sliding through my right hand. It's giving me power and also uh, avoids a grab by my opponent and I can use this in a close uh, distance as well. Now this one is a coup de bout talon. So this is the reverse. I'm using the talon which is the lower end of the stick. So I charge but notice how I grab the end of the stick, I make a step and I open up the left end slightly to give me a little bit more mobility. Next is the coup de revers, so the reverse strike. This one is a little bit more tricky. So we start from a charge position but Notice how I push, I push my stick into a brise, but re I release the left hand, which gives me a little bit more extension. So this is a fairly deceptive strike. So if you're aiming for the hands, aiming for an opponent that's retreating. Now we're going to the more basic strike. This is the coup de tête. So I'm doing a brise on my right side with a lunge. This is the first basic step, first basic uh, footwork motion you'll see in Joinville, basic lunge. So I extend, the first motion is I extend the stick, then I roll to the side and strike to the head straight on. One of the reasons why I want to extend is partly to get a little bit more power, a little bit more range of motion into my strike. Now this one is the uh, Kudbu 
uh, sorry, the, the could tie it on the left side, could boot gauche. So uh, now this is getting a little bit tricky. Observe my footwork here. So I do a first brise, which they call a feint in, um, in the manuals. So I feint to the right, then move to the left as I do a half step. And then I follow up with another step to do my actual strike. And notice how my heel gets off the ground. I have very little choice doing this, and it's something they show in the later manuals. Uh, the earlier manuals actually show the heel down the floor. And it's very interesting that they chose in some of the later editions to actually put newer illustrations and showing this foot position. I think maybe they realize in the early version that keeping your foot completely down as kind of motion was extremely difficult. Uh, I've, uh, I, I've tried to, but uh, and during my practice, but it makes the motion a little bit more limited and awkward. So I prefer to raise the heel as they do in uh, the later manuals. So again, from the front here, A little bit faster. And you'll see that all the strikes I'm going to show you have two versions. One with a lunge and one with a step. And it's always kind of the same idea. Now this is the cut figure uh, or face strike. So the cut figure is basically an horizontal strike to the face. So I lift my hands up to be able to start the motion and give me power. And then as I start a lunge, I rotate and stop my strike on the right side. And again, notice how my back foot is uh, the heel is up now I shouldn't be uh, according to the manual at least I shouldn't be bending the knee I should be keeping the the back leg straight it's pretty hard to do if you're doing a fairly wide lunge it's not impossible but it's it is not easy So again, same motion forward facing. So again, I lift my hands up. I strike as I rotate the hips. And with a little bit more speed. And so you'll notice how most of these strikes are given towards the lead leg. This gives me a little bit more power as I can really get my legs, my hips, and all my back behind the strike. I can do it from both sides. There's nothing stopping me from doing this, but I think they purposefully chose to show you these two motions in order to make it uh, make the point that they were the most powerful. So, this is the second motion. So doing the uh, cut figure on uh, the left side. So again, look how I'm fainting, but my faint actually gives me the opportunity to raise my hand to power my horizontal strike. And again, I do a half step. And if you can, you can try to keep that back leg straight as you're doing it. And this is fairly difficult, especially if you're taking a, a large lunge as I'm doing here. Uh, if you're taking a smaller 
step it's actually much easier to keep the back leg straight but at some point you uh, simply have to do it so again fainting so I'm not developing the whole strike but this is a faint and a way to prepare my actual strike now we're moving to the uh, the final strike which is the flank strike the coup de flan. so this one is done with an alve so rising strike but I'm aiming towards the body so towards the ribs of my opponent although I can also strike to uh, anything that sticks out could be the knees could be the groin could be the hands or even chin and again bringing that back heel up so I can complete my motion with using both of my shoulders and I try to end the strike just on top of my head So facing forward. Same thing. So you see how I prepare my star strike as if I was going to launch a face strike. So going up to the side and then rising up at the last minute and hitting the flank. So receiving that hit in the ribs and the floating ribs would be awfully awfully painful then again same idea as the previous strikes when I'm doing this from my right I want to start the motion with a feint so with uh, a, uh, an alve I'm not extending but after this motion I lunge or step and extend completely notice how I tend to bring the tip down a little bit too much when coming back on guard uh, don't do this if you don't have a bayonet if you have a stick please keep the please keep the tip up so you can defend your face so one detail I want to say is while I was filming this the temperature was in the uh, high 30s Celsius uh, it was uh, during a heat wave so if I look a little bit tired this is why so again from the front going up fainting and then extending with a step and make sure your arms are properly locked when you finish these motions so that it's easier for you to stop strike so that lock should happen at the uh, at the wrists so what I'm doing here is I'm doing an alve uh, with a step but to the opposite side and I can get power but it's simply not quite as powerful as doing it from the opposite leg so I was talking to you earlier about why are we holding the talon, so the uh, the lower end of the stick, um, so low. So why is it sticking out like this? And uh, the answer that I found is actually from a Swiss manual, uh, which was heavily influenced by the Joinville. And what the uh, the manual tells us is that this was used. Uh, 
uh, not necessarily as a counterweight, although it could be used in this way, but really to protect the hands. Now you see what I'm doing here? I'm raising the stick, blocking with the tunnel. So that's actually what they tell us to do. If a blow comes for your hand, you rise them, you block with that tunnel, and then you follow up with a counter. And this can be done from both sides, of course. So rising up and striking. So this is a difficult technique to pull up, to be honest, uh, because you need to train. It's not something that you see in a lot of uh, manuals, but it is in Irish tech fighting, uh, interestingly. And another technique that the Swiss show us is the souffle. So using one hand, especially when you're doing uh, parries with arms apart, now another thing that the Joinville manual uh, discussed very briefly is that you can use all these techniques I just showed with the can, so with the walking stick or short stick. So all you have to do is to follow the same motions but simply one end with the, the off end behind your back on your hip and doing the same thing, brises, enlevés one-ended so you keep the same idea you keep the hand a little bit higher because all the parries are going to be done like we just did with the point down uh, one thing that's different is they do mention that when you're fighting with a cane you can switch hand and they encourage you to do so uh, we have to develop the body on both sides and they also have you use souffle, like we just discussed. So from one hand and taking a high two-handed guard. So that's about it for my introduction to the Baton Joinville. I hope you liked it. Uh, there's unfortunately no translation that I'm aware of right now of the, this, um, this Joinville manual, but uh, I might be working on it in the, the next uh, few months. Uh, so hopefully I'll really release it and give you guys some of the material to work with. But in the meanwhile, uh, feel free to practice what I just showed you. Have fun. And if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, ask me. And um, do visit my blog, uh, I Don't Do Longsword. Thank you, guys.